Okay, ready to dive into some seriously cool tech. We're talking humanoid robots today. But like, not the dancing kind. The kind that's ready to get to work. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing. The whole field is shifting, you know, moving away from robots built just for show. Now we're talking robots designed for real-world tasks. And that brings us to Atlas. Exactly. Atlas is like the poster child for this new era of robots. This is the robot we're focusing on for yeah. today's deep dive. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some videos and it's, well, it's amazing. Atlas can work autonomously. Right. No joystick, no remote control. Like it just pure robot intelligence. Exactly. Imagine a factory, right? Parts everywhere. Atlas can navigate that chaos, pick out the parts it needs and move them to the right spot all on its own. It's wild. There's this video, right, where Atlas is moving engine parts between bins. And what gets me is how it adjusts to problems. If a part is in a weird spot, Atlas actually like reevaluates, moves, and tries again. It's using a combination of things, machine learning, sensors, and a specialized grasping policy. That's what they're calling it. So it's not just about seeing the part. It's about understanding how to, you know, interact with it. So it's not just pre-programmed. It's figuring things out as it goes. Exactly. That's a big deal. There are other humanoid robots out there, sure. But a lot of them still rely on humans behind the scenes, you know, controlling them. Atlas. Atlas is truly autonomous. That changes everything, doesn't it? Think about car manufacturing. Atlas could work right next to humans doing the dangerous jobs, the repetitive stuff, you know, the tasks that require insane precision. And that brings us to a big difference between Atlas and another robot you've probably heard of, Tesla's Optimus. They have totally different design philosophies. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask about that. What's the difference? Well, Atlas is built tough, like seriously tough. Think, a sturdy frame, three-fingered hands, all about moving and manipulating heavy parts. It's efficient and gets the job done in a practical setting. So Atlas is all about pure functionality. Exactly. Whereas Optimus, with its five-fingered hands and more human-like look, well, it's aiming for versatility, you know, handling lots of different tasks, maybe even domestic stuff. It's trying to, like, replicate human movement and interaction. So Atlas is the workhorse built for the factory. And Optimus is more like the all-rounder, maybe even for our homes. Right. It's like they're both aiming for the same goal robots integrated into our world, but taking completely different paths. And it's going to be fascinating to see how that plays out, mm. uh, how these two robots evolve. Totally. It's going to be wild. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how those different designs, you know, actually work out in the real world. Because with Atlas, I mean, it's so focused on strength and precision, it could like totally change how industries like manufacturing and construction work. You're talking about Atlas taking on the jobs that are, you know, tough, dangerous, the ones humans have been doing forever. Exactly. Think like welding on a skyscraper or moving those massive engine blocks in a factory, that kind of stuff. Jobs that need strength, you know, stamina, and they can be pretty risky for humans. And Atlas could just like power through it without getting tired or anything. Exactly. No fatigue, no distractions. And it can work in conditions that would be, you know, dangerous for us. Yeah. So you're talking about increased safety, more efficiency and way higher productivity. OK, but it's not just about like replacing humans completely, right? Mm -hmm. There's got to be room for collaboration, too. Oh, absolutely. Think of it this way. Atlas handles the heavy lifting, the really tough stuff, and then human workers can focus on the things that need, like problem-solving, creativity, you know, that kind of adaptability. So it's like a superpower teammate, always there to do the brute force stuff, and that frees us up to, like, think and innovate. Exactly. It's about finding that balance, right? Using the strengths of both humans and robots to reach a goal. So it's not robots versus humans, it's robots and humans working together. Right. Creating a future where tech makes us better, not obsolete. OK, I'm with you. But, you know, we've been focusing on manufacturing. But what about other areas? Could Atlas work in like healthcare mm. or even like disaster relief? The possibilities are huge. Think about surgery. Atlas assisting, you know, providing steady support, handling delicate instruments with crazy precision. Wow. So it's like having another set of like super steady hands in the operating room. Right. And in a disaster zone, Atlas could be searching for survivors in collapsed buildings or, you know, navigating environments that are just too dangerous for humans. It's kind of amazing to think we could use this technology to save lives and improve things for so many people. And that's what's so exciting about robotics, right? We're barely scratching the surface of what's possible. So... Okay, I'm curious. 
What are the like the technical things that let Atlas do all this? We've touched on machine learning and sensors, but what else is going on? Well, one of the most impressive things is the hydraulic system. It's like the robot's muscles, you know, hmm. provides the power and precision for all its movements. Hydraulics, like the stuff you see in those big construction machines. Exactly. It's pumps, valves, actuators, all using fluid pressure to create force. And in Atlas, it's crazy sophisticated. That's how it can move so smoothly, so controlled, even with heavy loads. So it's not just brute strength, it's controlled power. Exactly. And that control comes from a whole network of sensors and algorithms. They're constantly monitoring the robot's position, its balance, how much force is being used. It's crazy complex. So there's a lot of like processing power going on behind the scenes. Oh, yeah tons. Atlas is running some seriously advanced software. It's processing data from all those sensors, making calculations, adjusting the hydraulics, all in real time yeah. to make sure the movements are smooth, stable, and precise. So it's like Atlas has like a built-in sense of balance and coordination. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. It's a testament to all the research and development that's gone into making Atlas what it is. Okay, so we've talked about the brawn, the hydraulics, the sensors. What about the brains? How does Atlas think? How does it make decisions? Well, that's where the machine learning comes in. They train Atlas using huge amounts of data, right? So it can learn to recognize patterns, predict what's going to happen, and then make decisions based on its surroundings and whatever task it's doing. So again, it's not just following instructions. It's actually learning and adapting. Exactly. And the learning never stops. You know, as Atlas runs into new situations, new problems, it's gathering more and more data, refining its algorithms, getting even more capable. It's amazing that we can build machines that can learn and get better on their own. It's pretty wild, right? It really shows you what humans can do. But of course, with any powerful tech, there are going to be some concerns. <laughs> right. And I bet one of the biggest ones is, like, what about jobs? If robots like Atlas can do so much, are they going to replace human workers? Yeah. That's a valid concern, for sure, especially yeah. in fields like manufacturing, where lots of jobs involve those repetitive tasks that, you know, robots could easily do. I mean, yeah, it makes sense to be worried about that. It's complicated, you know. There are no easy answers. But it's important to remember that technology has always changed the job market. Think about the Industrial Revolution, right? It got rid of tons of farm jobs, but then created new ones in factories. It's a cycle. So it's not like a guaranteed doomsday scenario. It's more about... You know, adapting to change, right? Exactly. The key is education, training, you know, making sure people have the skills for the jobs that are going to be around in the future. So instead of being scared of robots, we should be figuring out how to work with them, use their strengths while we, you know, develop our own human skills. Exactly. It's all about embracing the possibilities, but also being smart about the challenges and facing them head on. This whole deep dive into Atlas has been... Well, eye-opening, to say the least. We've gone from, like, being amazed by what it can do to thinking about what it all means, you know, for us. Yeah, and I think it really highlights something important. The future of robots, it's not set in stone. Mm. We're the ones shaping it with our choices, our investments, even the conversations we're having right now. So it's not just about what robots can do, but what we want them to do. Exactly. We have a chance to shape this future in a way that, you know, reflects our values, our hopes. And that's a big responsibility, you know. Okay, I think it's time to, like, wrap up this part of the deep dive. We've covered a lot from, like, all the amazing things Atlas can do to, you know, how it could affect jobs and everything. Yeah, and the last part we should dive into some of the, you know, ethical questions around robots like Atlas and, and really think about what the future might hold, you know, for these advanced machines. So stick with us. Okay, so... We've spent the last two parts, you know, getting deep into Atlas, all the cool stuff it can do, how it could change things. But there's another side to this, I think, a deeper question. Yeah, for sure. When you're dealing with robots as advanced as Atlas, you can't ignore the big questions, right? The philosophical stuff. Exactly. I mean, these machines are pushing the limits of what we thought was possible. And that makes us think, you know, about our own ideas about intelligence, what it means to be conscious, even like what it means to be human. It's like all those classic sci-fi questions are suddenly becoming real. Right. Like earlier we were talking about how Atlas learns and adapts. It solves problems. It even seems to have like a sense of balance and coordination. And it kind of yeah. makes you wonder, like, at what point does AI become, you know, real intelligence? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And people have been debating it for decades. 
some say like true intelligence needs consciousness, right? Like being aware of yourself and the world around you. But even defining consciousness, that's like a whole other rabbit hole. So we don't even know what we're looking for when we ask if a machine is like aware. Pretty much. And even if we could like agree on what consciousness is, how would you measure it in a machine? It's a head scratcher for sure. But like it's not just an abstract thought experiment anymore, right? Not with robots like Atlas out there in the world. Exactly. And that brings up a whole bunch of like super interesting questions about, you know, our future with technology. Are robots like Atlas just going to be tools or will they be something more? Companions, maybe collaborators, maybe even competitors. It's kind of a lot to take in. I mean, if we could build machines this capable, where do we go from here? Like, where's the line between human and machine? Yeah. And that line is getting blurrier all the time. I think it's super important that we keep talking about all of this, you know, and not just scientists, but everyone. Because in the end, the future of robots, it's not just about tech. It's about us. What kind of world we want to build, what role we want robots to play in it. And, you know, how do we make sure that all this tech actually helps humanity, you know? Exactly. Well said. I think this deep dive into Atlas, it's given us a glimpse into what that future might look like. A future where robots aren't just sci-fi, but a real part of our lives. It's been a pretty wild ride for sure, exploring how Atlas works, what it can do, and, you know, the big questions it brings up about what it means to be human. Right. And maybe it's made us think a little differently about, you know, what intelligence is, what consciousness is, and how our relationship with machines is changing. Absolutely. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive into the world of Atlas. It's been a fascinating journey, and hopefully it's given you all some food for thought as we enter this new era of robotics. Thanks for listening.